Hi, Irini. Perfect. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clear and we can see your screen. So, so, so you can do your presentation if you uh, like. Okay. Can you see my slide? We can see your slide. Perfect. Um, hello, I am Dr. Lerju Irini, an adjunct professor at the University of West Attica in Greece. In this presentation, uh, we are going to observe a wireless garment for recording well-being as a tool to predict COVID-19 cases. But in this presentation, we do not focus primarily on the technical part. This presentation aims to document first time the theoretic and methodological foundations of designing a multifunctional smart suit that monitors the well-being status of the wearer as a tool to record the well-being of the general population. So, theoretical framework. A given definition of general well-being must divide the factors contributing to well-being into economic and non-economic as Arthur Cecilio claims and definitely include Aristotle's education in virtues to the later. So, the general well-being is the addition of economic well-being and non-economic well-being. By bringing Plato, Euthydemus, Edgeworth, Aristotle, and Pigou into account, a definition of well being is formulated as follows. The well being uh, of people is a society's chief end, as the potential pleasure that they enjoy originating from certain economic and non economic factors which determine this chief end the most important being an education that cultivates in individuals what kind of people they ought to be. Consistent to the above, the definition of poverty is the following. Poverty is the deviation from this chief end of a society expressed as the potential sand feelings like anxiety, uh, people experience originating from the deprivation of some economic or non-economic factors determining this chief end, the most important being an education that cultivates in individuals what kind of people they ought to be. So, this is the structure and, uh, of a potential tool recording well-being. And the boxes in yellow color are the most important for this presentation. The multifunctional government's biosignals detect, among others, individuals' shirt rates, or, for example, if they are stressed due to the lack of factors contributing to their well-being as a job, a satisfactory salary, sufficient spare time, a feeling of security as a result of high levels of social solidarity in their environment, or an appropriate education. Moreover, oxygen levels can reveal if they live in a quality location free of pollution due to effective social and economic improvements in the context of sustainable development. A questionnaire is used to collect data on the individual's diet. All the information mentioned contributes to reaching conclusions on whether the individuals have a strong immune system capable to protect them from all diseases, including COVID-19. Thus, the risk of contracting the later can be predicted. 
and methodological framework. The neural networks can be used as a tool to foresee whether an individual will fall ill with COVID-19 or not. A sample of individuals who have recovered from COVID-19 is required. The data is collected by wearing the provided multifunctional garment and by the questionnaires relevant to the six dimensions of general well-being they fill in. The neural networks build knowledge and learn from this data. Subsequently, the data of a healthy person are collected and since the neural networks have learned, they can provide results on the probability of this person developing COVID-19. Neural Network Learning Archive. The first two rows are questions addressed to the network after it has completed the learning process. Fuzzy logic. The rules of a fuzzy inference system are applied as an auxiliary tool for decision making in order to improve the general well being of a person in the future. The question that arises is given that the fuzzy inference system measuring individual's general well being is configured on the grounds of the general well being dimensions, how can the contribution of each dimension on their general well being be estimated and how much should a specific dimension improve in order to attain the desired general well being goal to render them less? vulnerable to COVID-19. In addition, we observe uh, examples of entry uh, data, exit data and rules. So, conclusions. This presentation documents first time the theoretic and methodological foundations of designing a multifunctional smart suit that monitors the well-being status of the wearer as a tool to record the well-being of the general population. In order to materialize this tool, a number of individuals who have recovered from COVID-19 are required. Thank you for your attendance in my presentation. Any question? Yeah, many thanks for your presentation. Are You're there any, any questions from the audience? And you can ask it in the chat box or raise your hand. There are no questions from the audience. Um, so maybe I did not understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, Completely, but uh, to what extent is this this tool already in in development and and tested? Is it pure theoretical or is it already in in development? Okay, uh, it's uh, theoretical. Uh, is an idea, and uh, maybe in the future um, uh, can I do this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hopefully so. But but already is there some some did you already talk with the industry and, and designers or uh, is it still in an early stage? Okay, uh, it's only a desire, and uh, if I I have uh, funds and etc., maybe I, I can uh, uh, develop this tool. Okay, very nice. Well, I I very much like and appreciate the idea in any case. Thank you. <laughs> okay, then, then I would like to thank you for your uh, presentation. And we move on to the next uh, presenter. Thank you.
Hi, Jordi. Jordi? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And we can hear you now much better than, uh, than before. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much uh, again for your comprehension. And should I uh, share my screen maybe or, or how, how do I change my presentation? Uh, you can share your screen. You can hit the green button at the bottom of your screen. Okay, I will, yeah. I will try. Uh, let me try. Mm -hmm. Share screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, screen. Share. Mm -hmm. Share. Okay, uh, can you see my presentation right now? Yeah, we can see your presentation. So okay. you can start. Okay, so. Uh, Thank you very much for, for uh, to everybody to for being here. Uh, we can, I am Jordi Mendes from the uh, uh, or Jorge Luis Mendes from the autonomous from the University of Barcelona, of the department professor uh, lecturer at the department of um, research methods and diagnosis in education, and uh, I will present uh, our research uh, titled "Intellectual Disability and Quarantine." Effects of confinement uh, on the subjective well-being of children and youth, uh, carried out with uh, Rafael Azemi and Ana Belén Canoila from the University of Barcelona, and Angelina Sanchez Martí from the Department of uh, Applied Pedagogy of the Autonomous University of Barcelona, in which we have uh, assessed how the mobility restrictions and the uh, lockdown uh, in Spain during the COVID-19 pandemic has affected quality of life, uh, well-being, uh, and well-being of uh, children and youth uh, under 20 year, 21 years old, and how the relax, uh, the relaxation of uh, these measures have also uh, changed the well-being and the quality of life, and how some hypothetical predictive uh, variables, such like um, self-efficacy of the caregivers, social support, and uh, the maturity of, uh, of the children and youth with disability uh, had a role in that uh, quality of life and this will be. So uh, in that slide, you can see the content of this presentation. We will begin with the objective uh, setting and a brief summarized uh, description of the design. Then we will talk a little bit about how the COVID-19 um, pandemic has affected Spain and we will uh, see also very very fast um, some aspects that uh, re that links uh, disability and lockdown and will be uh, well-being uh, and emotional well-being and during this lockdown in spain then we will see the methods of the our research uh, about, uh, we will talk about uh, the stages the sample what uh, variables did we assess and what data analysis we carried out, and then we will present <clears throat> briefly the results and the conclusions of our research. Uh, to, to begin, the, or to summarize the, the objectives of, our, of uh, our research, we can say that um, the main objective was to analyze how children and youth with low or moderate uh, to severe or profound intellectual disability had get, uh, been adapted or not to the confinement period uh, from a perspective of well-being and emotional well-being, uh, both during the strict uh, lockdown uh, and uh, after easing these mobility restrictions in, in Spain. Uh, very, very summarized, uh, doing a very sum summarizing <laughs> the design and setting, we applied uh, a questionnaire methodology in two waves in a proposed design. Uh, the first wave was applied um, when the strictest lockdown was uh, being uh, implemented in Spain and the second wave correspond to the, the second wave when the mobility restrictions were easing. And the target of all research, as I said in the beginning, was children and youth with different types 
and degrees of intellectual disability from 3 to 21 uh, years old. As uh, most of you should know, Spain was one of the most affected countries uh, in the world by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as you can see in the, in the map, in the right side of the slide, um, this is more or less how the pandemic has uh, affected the different autonomous communities, the different regions in Spain. And you can see that in the center, uh, there is a big, a big COVID um, a draw. That means that Madrid was the most uh, affected region with Catalonia that is um, in the top right side of the, of the map. Uh, in that context of, of a very high number of infections and, and, and deaths, deaths uh, caused by COVID, uh, the Spanish government has to implement one of the most strict confinement in the world that included the complete uh, restriction of the mobility uh, with uh, the only permission to go out for uh, in very, very uh, concrete cases like uh, going to the pharmacy or, or the to supermarket to buy food. Uh, even do, during two weeks, uh, all the industry was uh, stopped, excepting the strategic sectors like um, like the energy production and, and the food production. So the situation meant that uh, children in general and children and youth people with disability in special uh, had forgiven to leave home for more than a, a, a month and a half uh, with um, the isolation it, uh, it uh, was associated with. Uh, in that slide, we can see uh, the results of one of the mobility monitoring studies that was uh, carried uh, on during the pandemic. This one in concrete is a, a Google study of uh, with the date of 29th of March, we have to, to know that um, the lockdown in Spain began the 40th of March, so it's two weeks after, and we can see, for example, how uh, it was a reduction of 94% uh, in recreation retail, and also uh, a 76% reduction in the mobility linked, linked to pharmacy or, or buying food. So. It means that Spain, the people in Spain had uh, presented a very high level of comp compliance of the lockdown measures, uh, what uh, meant uh, a big help to stop and to control the pandemic. Even now, you know that these days things are going worse again in Spain. But in that time, it was very useful to prevent and to preserve the population's health. But on the other hand, it has meant, um, in general, uh, an isolation period. For example, during that period, uh, it estimated that uh, depression and anxiety prevalence uh, was 10 times more than before the lockdown. And focusing in youth, people and youth and uh, children with disability, um, it meant uh, also uh, a lot of service of support uh, in terms, for example, of Therapy, therapeutic support and psychological support, medical support, um, logopedics, etc. And in some sense, it was a forgetfulness of their needs, what led to a significant worsening in their living condition, uh, conditions with, with the people, even that there were some good uh, things, uh, so even some good things happened during this confinement, for example, it was an increase in uh, the interaction with, uh, with the adults and the caregivers, uh, um, an increase in technology use. But uh, in terms of negative impact, uh, the schools are even now closed. And in fact, there is not clear today how the course <coughs> will begin. And, in, and uh, it's only one week for that. And a, big, a really big uh, reduction of social activities. So in that context, uh, what we aimed was to measure how, uh, what, um, to what extent the situation has had um, an impact in the quality of life in terms of uh, well-being and emotional well-being. And we did with a questionnaire that was distributed in four dimensions. The first was the conditions of the confinement experienced by families, caregivers, 
and children and youth in terms, for example, of the size of the house, the resources in the, in the house, etc. The second dimension uh, was uh, focused on the, the hypothetical uh, preventive uh, variables, such like uh, self efficacy of caregivers, the social support, and other coping strategies. For example, the, um, how, to what extent uh, um, families were able to explain to children what was happening and what, to what extent they were able to uh, induce acceptance in them. The first dimension uh, is the subjective consistent in the measure of uh, some emotions according to the model of Cummings uh, to assess the subjective well-being of the children and to and uh, the fourth and, and last dimension was focused on socio-demographic variables like uh, the incomes of the family, the educational level of the parents or caregivers, etc. So, as we said in the as, as I said in the beginning, the confinement began in Spain the fourth uh, the fourth uh, of May. You can see the the curve of how the number of infections uh, increased very very fast. So the confinement begins uh, began the fourth of March and um, the strict uh, confin confinement uh, was ended uh, at the beginning of May with the, when in different stages the um, restriction mobility, the mobility restrictions were uh, being eased, began to, to, be, to be eased. So our first wave of questioners was applied at the end of the strict confinement and the second wave was uh, implemented just when the Spanish government um, is at the confinement. No? Like this, we can see how this change can also affect the, um, this uh, well-being and this quality of life we are trying to, to measure. In the first wave, there were 549 families or legal guardians. You can see the distribution by gender and by age. Uh, and they, they responded the first questionnaire. Uh, and then, at the end of the first questionnaire, we, the, the participants were asked about uh, their interest or if they would like to uh, participate in a second wave of the study to receive again uh, the questionnaire to uh, respond it when the lockdown uh, was easier. As you can see, in wave two, the number of participants was, was uh, less than in the first wave, uh, but the distribution by gender and age was more or less the same, um, and the profile of caregivers was more or less the same that in the first wave. Um, to uh, analyze uh, or to to understand our question, to what extent pandemic uh, restriction, uh, mobility restriction, had um, affected well-being and quality of life during the strict confinement and after lockdown, uh, we carried out a mixed repeat measures analysis to compare the mean in the emotional reactions during the quarantine and after, uh, during contrast, the uh, Bonferroni contrast. We also com compared the affective state between low to moderate and severe to profound intellectual disability uh, by means of uh, the ANOVA, a one-way ANOVA in both waves of the study. And finally, to, to detect, to, um, to detect uh, this uh, hypothetical um, variables or, or coping strategies that can help and can, or can promote the well-being of that children during this situation, we, we, we carried out uh, deliberate correlations. So now here you have the results. Uh, what you can see is in the first wave during the lockdown, this uh, figure shows the means in the, in the one to five scale the, we use of different uh, emotions. So you can see during the lockdown, the, um, the most present uh, emotions were not only negative emotions, as we can maybe um, think uh, at the first time, at, at the first look, but it's, it's, it's uh, true. Uh, there were uh, the most negative emotions, the most present negative emotions were stress and anxiety, but there were also high levels of joy of uh, uh, happiness, uh, etc. So uh, we can also see that there is the, we didn't found a difference between the type of disability, uh, 
uh, or the degree of intellectual disability. So it was a surprising uh, result. And what we found in the second wave was uh, more or less the same, but uh, there was um, two concrete uh, aspects we, I want to comment in the next slide. This is the first wave result summary. There was an increase in joy, affection, and happiness, but also an increase in anxiety and stress induced obviously by the conditions, the, the lift conditions during the pandemic. And in the first wave, what we found, it was an, a higher increase in positive emotions like joy, affection, happiness, but also satisfaction and a reduction in negative emotions. That means that when the lockdown was eased, uh, the quality of life of these uh, children and youth uh, were, was, was higher. So let's see now what predictors we have found uh, in uh, that can uh, promote that well-being. In the, in the um, rows, you can see the items about, for example, self-efficacy, the three, one, the three first items talk about self-efficacy. I have ideas and resources in order to do things with my children. I, have it easy to, I find it easy to manage the confinement situation at home with children and youth at my church. I feel able to manage this situation by myself, but also, uh, Items about, for example, social support. I feel like I feel like I'm getting social support from my environment. Uh, about comprehension, you know, I think the children and youth in my church agree to be confinated. Uh, uh, acceptance, excuse me, and comprehension. I think the children and youth in my church understand why we are uh, in why we are in confinement. Uh, if you can see in the in the row, in the columns, uh, in general. Self-efficacy and social support, and also confinement acceptance and, and comprehension, had a great uh, correlation with uh, the most uh, emotions assessed in the questionnaire. You have in the in the bottom of the of the slide. So they, as I say, uh, they show uh, a significant and positive correlation, only moderates but a significant correlation with positive emotions, for example, joy, and a reduction uh, of uh, negative emotions, for example, sadness or anxiety. So what we can see in conclusion to end my presentation is our findings support the basic postulates of the theory of emotional homeostasis by Cummings and Lowe, uh, which states that in face of challenges, for example, the COVID 19 lockdown was one, is a great, in some sense, example. Uh, so when we, people face that kind of situation, uh, there is activated some kind of homeostatic control, seeking a balance, so positive feelings and uh, the reduction of the negative one, that, the, the negative ones. That's why what we say in the, the first slide of results. So uh, talking about uh, the protective variables, we found that the understanding of the confinement by part of the children and youth, the caregiver self-efficacy or the social support um, was uh, where the variables that uh, looks to uh, prevent, uh, seem to prevent uh, the, the, the impact in the well-being in the quality of life with uh, a calm lifestyle, etc. And to end my presentation, uh, only say to say that uh, our results contribute uh, to understanding uh, deeply the subjective well-being of youngsters uh, with different types and degrees of intellectual disability, and how his well-being is affected during periods of quarantine, <clears throat> and also show the need, uh, like. Uh, the United Nations states that uh, against the COVID-19 impact, it's needed a comprehensive and inclusive response to provide more accessible, accessible and adjust systems able to respond to this complex situation. For example, nowadays, there is no, it's not clear how these children uh, will, will be, will, could, uh, mm, they begin uh, again with uh, their treatments 
or when they could go to school, etc. So more research is needed to develop protocols and guidelines uh, in front of future uh, lockdowns uh, for COVID-19 or for uh, any other reason uh, to preserve the well-being and of these of these children. So thank you very much for uh, for your attention. Do you have there you have the draw about this is some kind of motivational draw that is in uh, everywhere in Spain. The hashtag means everything will be okay. Todo irá bien. And I hope that todo irá bien for all of you that heard me. So thank you very much again. I will uh, I will be pleased to respond all the questions you, you can make me. And thank you again to the organization to, of, the, of the conference for the comprehension and for uh, changing uh, the order of the presentations. Uh, that's all. Okay, thank you for your uh, presentation. If you have any questions, you can uh, post your question in the chat box or raise your hand. We mm -hmm. have in any case, a question by uh, Maria Angelis, uh, who congratulates you on, on your work. You can also read the question Q&A if you open that. Mm -hmm. And she asks, how do you explain that children report greater happiness satisfaction in confinement in addition to the theory they have mentioned? Maybe it is because children are happy to be at home with parents and siblings. But mm -hmm. uh, I I, I, I was reading the, the question by Maria uh, and I, I was a little bit lost because uh, I think that she's um, really, 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 uh, um, what they say is the truth. She, she said, maybe uh, children and youth uh, in had, they presented a, a high level of positive emotions like happiness due to the confirming baby because they are happy to stay at home with their parents. You know? in, in that time where uh, sometimes uh, you know, how the, the way of life of the adults um, impose, um, it's like, uh, do not, do not uh, for men, um, it's not normal you know, to, to be close, the parents and the, and the children. And, and for example, uh, I, it's, I, I made the same reflection because uh, I thought, uh, in fact, the, greatest scenario for our children is to be home with their friends and their parents uh, and uh, maybe it's one of the explanation of of, uh, of this now they they, ha they get more attention from their, their parents they they had more time for example to play with them um, but uh, so that's absolutely right I, I think i think maria is absolutely right but maybe it's, i think that uh, in some sense um, maybe some kind of uh, proud, maybe the children feel proud also to contribute uh, to that, uh, to, to, the, to the prevention or to, to, the, to the improvement of the situation. Um, and they feel also that um, they are contributing to get things better. Uh, so asking to Maria also the, the second question, at my university, she says, I at my university I'm a tutor of students with mental illness and confinement has to be absolutely disaster for this person, both academically, academically and from health point of view. That's absolutely uh, right, uh, Maria, Maria Angeles. Um, and we, that I found, uh, uh, founding we, have, we, we also saw in our research, but this presentation is not focused on that. We have only, I have only talked very briefly about, but it's, um, this, um, it, uh, the interruption of every kind of, uh, of interventions uh, was very, very, very high. More than, a, for example, the psychological uh, interventions uh, were um, interrupted in more than the 80% of the cases. But the same uh, for logopedics or, or, or um, um, well, the educational interventions were, uh, were close to zero during the confinement. Even even uh, the schools tried to maintain contact uh, using virtual tools like Zoom, for example. But uh, the only the only treatments that were not very very affected were, was uh, the medical treatments. So um, 
In that presentation, we only focus on emotional status or emotional well-being, but she also did right uh, in the when she when you when she say my angeles. Um, when you say that uh, the interventions or the the health status, even the men, the mental health status, uh, had a very great impact. Uh, but even maybe this is one of the of the strategies we have to reflect when we talk about a more inclusive response uh, in phase of future of future um, confinement scenarios. And uh, thank you, and Maria Angeles, for your comments. Uh, we will go on with our research. Now we're trying to publish some res some results and and to look uh, how to continue. Uh, so let me, um, Devrim, you said, uh, do, do you, you know information on how children are already stupid in their house, not to social services? Uh, so for these groups, not something changed during the pandemic. Second, is it possible to control for parents changing mental health and the impact of the well-being of children? Okay, I will try, try to ask uh, the fir maybe first the first question and then the second one. Um, you say that uh, if we have information on how children are really uh, is a ticket in the in house, that's more or less. Uh, I have more or less answer when I ask uh, answer Maria Angeles. Uh, the access to, to, for example, psychological interventions, even in an online format, was very, very low. Very, very, very uh, it was inexistent. More than the eighty percent. Um, Eighty percent uh, of interventions were, were completely interrupted, uh, and maybe you you are um, suggest what you suggest for your from your comment. We can suggest, for example, other intervention in that inclusive uh, response in future in future consumer scenarios. Maybe social workers uh, have to to have a great greater um, greatest contact with families. Uh, even in an online format. And uh, in the, the second question, is it possible to control for parents changing mental health on the impact of well-being of children? Uh, when I presented my, uh, uh, or the results of the hypothetical predictors, there was one of the variable that I think it's the key, the key point to, to do that, you are asking before, and that, that's self-efficacy. Because uh, it has shown that when uh, parents feel uh, able to control the situation, they really do, and they, they even if they have the tools, if they don't feel uh, able, they will not uh, be able to control them. Uh, so I think it's a, a really uh, possible to control. Um, the, or to change the, control, the mental status of the children um, and this impact uh, of well-being of children. Uh, it's uh, maybe the, the role of politicians or so of or, um, um, governments is uh, exactly to teach how to do that. It's not um, very, very, very complicated, uh, in fact. But, uh, for example, in Spain, uh, every day we have the, the, um, the, I don't know how to say, the report, and every day we have some kind of information and, and uh, advices from the government. But nothing was said about how to manage these kind of situations. I don't know, Devrin, if, uh, if I have asked you, and especially because my horrible English, but uh, I think it's possible, and it's only... Um, it's only related to promote self-efficacy and to bring tools to parents. I don't know if you have heard my my answers. Thank you, Maria Angeles, for your questions also. Yep, uh, thank you for your questions. Are there any other questions? Uh, I don't know if uh, you understood my English. I'm so sorry. I, I am a little bit sorry for that. Oh, no problem. It was well enough. <laughs> um, 
So many thanks, I, I think, then for your presentation. Mm -hmm. And um, this also concludes our session since the report paper by Carlos, Carlos couldn't make it uh, today. I uh, thank all of you attending this session. We will continue in an hour at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's the last session of today. Uh, the channel will remain open, and that is because we had a technological difficulty with the first presentation by Devrin, and we will re-record it. So if you missed that presentation, you can still watch it. Um, if you did already, then I hope you will enjoy your break, and we see you later on. Okay. Hi, Devin. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, my sincere apologies for the recording. It was uh, uh, beyond our uh, control. It's okay. It yeah. happens. It happens. Uh -huh. But we would at least like you to have the opportunity to have a full screening of your presentation online. Mm -hmm. And I will pretend like I'm, I'm presenting for the first time, right? E Yes, yeah, so you can just uh, have your uh, yeah full presentation. Okay, okay. Uh, okay shall I start? Recorded. It's okay. Yeah, you can start. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm David Mdunuda from Marmara University. I'm glad to meet you at the ICQLS virtual conference uh, today. I would like to present the basic findings of the research carried by Every Child Yanakai. Özkan Zülfüoğlu, Hoşenk Bülbül, and myself. First of all, I would like to start with the outline. Uh, I'm going to introduce our motivation and then present the survey and demographics. And then we'll continue with the descriptive on the pandemic on, in regard to the topics such as online education, psychology of students, financial aspects, uh, the students' social life, and their expectation. Like many universities around the world, Marmara University in Turkey has shifted to online education at the end of March 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The online semester ended at the end of June, uh, including exams. So our purpose is to see how our students' well-being affected during the pandemic. We would like to see their reaction to online education. Was it efficient for them? And we would like to see their uh, mental health and well-being and we would like to see the change in their social life and financial situation. Of course, we would like to see also their expectation for the future. Thanks to the efforts of the journals, like many of them called for papers in regard to research with the pandemic and research institutions, universities, they provide a special finding opportunities and the rising interest of scholars there's a growing literature on the effects of pandemic on many aspects, such as social and economic life, human behavior, mental health, and etc. And our study aims to examine the well-being of students during the pandemic. So we designed a unique survey that includes questions on perceptions of the students on online education, social, financial, and psychological aspects. At the Faculty of Economics, there are five programs econometrics, public finance, labor economics and industrial organization, and economics. And economics program are taught in both Turkish and English. And as you can see, uh, 428 students of total 4,000 registered students responded to the survey. The percentage is around 10. And the majority of students are from econometrics and economics programs and the third and fourth grade students dominate the sample. We focused on undergrad students. We don't uh, examine the PhD or master students because uh, they had a chance to not to have the online education. Uh, they 
communicate with their professors and uh, they uh, did their courses in other uh, platforms. We just focus on the online education platform of Marmara University. And what we see here is that uh, the female population is 58%. Uh, and we see that most of the students prefer living with their families during the pandemic. And I think that's the reason why household size is uh, higher than we expected. In the survey, uh, there are three questions on the subject of well-being. There are two life satisfaction questions and one happiness question. Life satisfaction questions are 11 scale and happiness question is four scale. Like how do you feel these days? How happy uh, are you these days? And the life satisfaction questions are asked for the current time of period and for the uh, 2019 before the pandemic. As you can see, the average score of life satisfaction in 2019 is 6.67 and it diminished to 5.77 uh, in the current period. Of course, uh, we ask respondents, uh, we would like to see their perception of their life satisfaction in the previous year. The best way is to find these students in the last year and ask them in uh, 2019. And also we are aware of the fact that the students would give much lower score for the last year because of the pandemic. But on the other hand, we also know that in the literature and in the basic surveys, uh, the life satisfaction for five years ago question is used commonly. So at, at least we think that it could give idea about the trend in life satisfaction, although there is a bias effect we already accept uh, in the uh, answers of students. But we, we have a, a robustness check uh, for the happiness. And what is it that the faculty of the dean office at the faculty of economics apply uh, satisfaction survey uh, in 2018 and 2019. And what we did is that uh, we compared the findings of these surveys with our findings. And the survey of the Dean Office include questions on happiness, satisfaction with the university, faculty, and departments. As you can see from the uh, slide, uh, the average happiness levels of economics and econometrics students uh, drop significantly and we see a slight changes in other aspects but on the other hand the happiness uh, average scale is 3.04 uh, it dropped from 3.04 to 2.56 and for the economic students the score dropped from 2.91 to 2.38 in comparison to other satisfaction domains, these changes are uh, significant. And also public finance students' uh, uh, happiness levels diminished from 2.35 and increased to 2.96 and then dropped to 2.07. But on the other hand, we don't see a, a significant change in labor economics students. Uh, their happiness almost remained the same. But at the end, we can say that the subjective well-being of students uh, drop during the pandemic period in regard to life satisfaction and happiness. And in the following slides, I would like to uh, say that the subjective, uh, I would like to present brief information related to education, finance, psychology, and social life aspects. And what we see here is 80% uh, 80, 80 of the students stated that they had motivation problems to follow online courses. And 50% of students satisfied with the online education. That means another 50% uh, did not satisfy with the online education. That is, something to, that is something for administration to deal with. And 60% of the students declared that they had comfortable environment to follow the online courses, but more important, 10% uh, of the students declared that they didn't ac uh, have access to any computer. Uh, I can say something much more about this. We know that uh, most of the students 
lived their dormitories or apartments in the uh, uh, in the cities for three weeks because uh, at first the government declared three weeks holiday and the students thought that they would turn back to the universities so most of them uh, quit their computers or other stuff uh, in the dormitories or apartments and at the end they couldn't turn back to the uh, cities back so 10% uh, of the students didn't have computer access and 28% of the students had difficulty uh, run access to internet and maybe an important issue for the administration again uh, 60, 65% percent of the students said that their the faculty the academics did not respond to their emails uh, this is something uh, sad to say and when we when we look at the uh, psychological effects we see that uh, most of the students uh, experience anxiety due to uncertainty and they had concerns for their own health and their uh, health of their family and 65% of the students experienced disappointment and frustration. 60% of the students declared, stated that they felt isolation and loneliness. And interestingly, 52% uh, of the students said that they need professional psychological support. And 67% of the students declared that uh, they would like to see an Online, support, online psychological support unit at the university. When we, when we check the financial situation, uh, we observe a dramatic decrease in household income. Uh, the household income of the respondents uh, in 2019 is approximately 640 euros, and it dropped to 557 euros in 2020. Uh, and GDP per capita in Turkey for the year 2019 is around uh, 9,000 US dollars. So we also observe uh, the family members of the students lost their jobs and most of them spent their previous savings. So the financial situation uh, is not so uh, well in regard to most of the students. And when we check the social life, we see that our students increase their mobile communication, they increase use of social media such as Twitter, Facebook, and they watch much more movies, and they increase online shopping like the other citizens as well, and they had new hobbies, etc. And I'm going to talk much more on the correlational uh, relations in regard to subjective well-being. And finally, on the descriptive, uh, I can say that uh, the students have a concern for the future in general and they have a huge concern for expectation to find a suitable job in the future and especially the, the fourth grade students uh, have serious concerns in regard to the uh, suitable jobs here uh, in the second part let's say uh, we have a regression analysis we check the correlation among uh, subjective well-being and these variables actually this is cross-section analysis so we prefer using correlation rather than effects and what we did is we run we estimated OLS and uh, ordered probit regressions and uh, but we only show OLS estimations in this uh, presentation and uh, in table one we see that there are two dependent variables, happiness and life satisfaction, and there are two separate regressions for each dependent variable. That's because here we would like to see the income effect and financial situation effect. We know that there is a huge drop in regard to household income, so we would like to control for it as well. In estimation one, we just put the household income without the increase. And in the second estimations, we introduce the increase in income. For happiness, uh, when the happiness is dependent variable, we see that without the increase in household income, uh, the actual household income is not statistically significant. But when we introduce the increase in income, both variables become statistically significant and they have a positive uh, coefficient. But in life satisfaction estimations, 
uh, we just see the household income is statistically significant. Uh, we don't see the increased effect on life satisfaction. Second, in both estimations or in all estimations, we see that saving money has a positive effect on life satisfaction. I'm saying effect, but please, uh, you can consider it as correlations. And uh, if, if the respondent has a stable financial situation, it has a positive effect on happiness, but not on life satisfaction. Second, we introduce into the model the uh, online education, psychological and financial uh, variables, much more financial variables. I'm going to just talk about it. And again, the regressions are for life satisfaction and happiness that are separate regressions. And what we see is that uh, if the environment is suitable for uh, the online courses, uh, it has a, a positive effect on life satisfaction and happiness. But on the other hand, if the students do not have computer access and they have a poor internet connection, these uh, affected happiness negatively, but there isn't any statistically significant relation with life satisfaction. In regard to psychological aspects, what we see is that uh, disappointment and loneliness have both uh, negatively correlated, are both negatively correlated with life satisfaction and happiness. And in regard to financial aspect, we see that if the people around the students or if the people in the family uh, lose their jobs, uh, they are negatively correlated with life satisfaction, but we don't find significant relation with the happiness. I think the most interesting part is when we introduce these variables into the model, borrowing money becomes statistically significant and has a positive coefficient. Uh, we can think that borrowing money has a positive effect because of during the economic depression, economic re recession, uh, people may be pleased to survive the period actually. So uh, borrowing money becomes statistically significant uh, in this model. And when we check the social life and subjective well-being, we found that uh, there is a negative correlation with watching movies, series, documentaries, and the use of social media with life satisfaction. Actually, we already know that in the literature, there are many studies showing that uh, the increase of using social media is negatively correlated with uh, uh, subjective well-being. So our finding also supports that uh, idea. And in regard to happiness, only watching movies, series, and documentaries is negatively correlated with happiness. On the other side, uh, friendship ties and new hobbies are positively correlated with life satisfaction. Again, this is uh, in parallel with the findings in the literature because we already know that increasing social ties, increasing social networks, social habits, uh, they, are, they have a positive effect on subjective well-being. And in regard to happiness, we only see that increasing friendship ties uh, is co positively correlated with happiness. And lastly, we checked for the expectation and we found that uh, having a concern for the expectation for the future is negatively correlated with life satisfaction and with happiness. On the other hand, we didn't find statistically significant relation for the job concern for the future. In conclusion, we can say that we observe a, a substantial diminish of subjective well-being in regard to life satisfaction and happiness of our students. And we also observe a, a significant indicators of anxiety, loneliness, and isolation uh, of our students. So uh, we, we, we suggest that online education shouldn't be uh, regarded as just with the available infrastructure or the capacity of the professors, uh, but we should focus on the needs of the students. Uh, otherwise, uh, the efficiency wouldn't improve in regard to online education. Of course, we also observe the household income, uh, the diminish of household income and loss of jobs in the families and environments in the, of the students. 
Uh, so our aim is to follow the same students for the next periods. So we could uh, see the trends and uh, we, we can see, uh, see uh, if we uh, able to uh, construct a panel, this will be much more rel reliable. Maybe we will be able to talk about the impact rather than correlations. And we aim to report uh, these findings to the administration and public opinion uh, for better understanding of the students' needs and mental health and well-being. Uh, so the online education uh, could increase the eff efficiency of students much better. Thank you for your patience and interest. Thank you, Derfan, and thank you for uh, recording this again. I'll stop the recording. You're welcome.